the wise, the fool, and the wicked. In this teaching, we're going to look at the third type of fool. Remember, there's those three categories, wise, fool, and wicked. And there's three types of fools that God describes in this category of fool. The third type is what's called a stubborn fool. This is the word kassel in Hebrew. And what it is, is it's a person who knows what they should do, chooses not to, and is in a repeated pattern of choosing not to. They're stubborn about it. It's not that they just make an occasional unreasonable choice. They're now making a deliberate uh, choice. They're being stubborn about evil. So let's look at a, at a couple verses here. Proverbs 26, 11, I think is pretty graphic. A dog, as a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. Now just look at that mind picture. A dog lapping up its vomit. From God's perspective, that's what a stubborn fool is. This is a person who repeats. It's a pattern of sinfulness. In Proverbs 10, 23, a fool, a cassell, a stubborn fool, finds pleasure in evil conduct. Now that's a whole different category here. We've got a person who's actually finding pleasure in evil conduct. Can you see the escalation of sinfulness? When we were talking about a simple fool, they may do wrong things, but they're ignorant. It's not by conscious, willful choice. The unreasonable fool occasionally makes the slip and the foray into evil. But now we're dealing with a stubborn fool. This is a person who's actually finding pleasure in evil, who's, who's living in a lot more uh, self-willed, self-centeredness, arrogance, and pride. In Proverbs 18.2, a fool finds no pleasure in understanding, but delights in airing his own opinion. It's all about himself. That's what the stubborn fool, that's what's in his heart. We said before that with the, with the unreasonable fool, there, the, maybe the conversation in their head is, well, I know what I should do, but I'm just not going to do it. Now, with the stubborn fool, the conversation is, I know what I should do, I'm not going to do it, and I don't really care what you have to say about it because nobody's going to make me do what I don't want to do. I mean, they're just stubborn in this. They're obstinate. They've got rebellion in their heart. They're committed to this. They reject godly counsel. They can't cope with legitimate authority. In many ways, this is a very dangerous place for a person to be. I think we've all been there at one time or another where, you know, we know that we shouldn't do something, but yet we just continue to do it. They have this increasing sense of sinfulness, and they're also, they're involving their mouth in it. Proverbs 18.6 says, a fool's lips, this stubborn fool, the cassell, brings him strife. That's a whole level of evil that's present now. And his mouth invites a beating. So what do you do? How do you deal with this kind of fool? Well, certainly instruction isn't going to help, nor is just simple discipline. That's why God says in verse tw uh, Proverbs 26, 3, a whip for the horse, a halter for the donkey, a rod for the back of fools. This is not just the sense of a, uh, a rod in the sense of direction. This is a rod of punishment. That's like a whip for the horse. There needs to be instituted major reproof. There's got to be consequences that are instituted when you're dealing with this type of sinful behavior. Proverbs 17.10 says, A rebuke impresses a man of discernment. More than 100 lashes the fool. See, this, you, this is something that stubbornness is born in their heart. It's not going to be driven from them. In fact, there's nothing you can do. When, when you're dealing with a person like this, oftentimes they're repeating a pattern. You feel hopeless after a while because you confront them, but nothing changes. Pretty soon you need to redefine the problem. If the problem, say, if I'm dealing with an employee and they're not meeting deadlines and they consistently aren't doing it and they're stubborn about it, now I sit down and the problem of deadlines, that's not the problem. They're the problem. 
and that's where the focus goes. And then I say, Charlie, we've got a problem. You're it. What are we going to do about it? And we institute boundaries and barriers and barricades, and we really shape that. You've got to be clear. You've got to be precise. There's got to be no wiggle room. You've got to be able to, to set down these boundaries for them. You've got to give them guidance. And many times it's like waving the red flag of reproof in front of the bull. Get out of the way because the bull's going to gore you. That's why in Proverbs 14, 7, it says, Stay away from a foolish man, a stubborn fool, for he will not find, you will not find knowledge on his lips. The fact is that this type of fool is the largest category that God addresses in Proverbs. More verses written about this kind of fool than any other fool. I pondered that for a while and wondered why. I think it's because this, that you have entered into a place that's very dangerous sinfully. That the next stage beyond that is, an, is a level of evil and wickedness. Yes, there's still evil and there's still wicked behavior here, but it's not as bad as where a person can slide into. And this point can be interrupted. But the way it has to be interrupted is the person themselves have to be pierced and they have to change. The thing that you want to do in dealing with a person like this, not get drawn into where they're at. That's why Proverbs 26, 4 says, do not answer a fool according to his folly. In other words, there's a fool, a stubborn fool. When he does something and I enter in to correct it, don't get on his level. Don't answer according to his folly. Or it says, or you will be like him yourself. Then Proverbs 26, 5 says, answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. What's the difference? Well, I'm going to answer the fool, but I'm not going to do it right on his level. I'm going to answer appropriately for his behavior. I'm going to identify it and then basically let the chips fall where they may. Many times what happens is this kind of fool isn't going to change until they hang themselves, until their behavior gets to the point where they just implode. They're, they're unashamed about pursuing the pleasures that they, that they're, they want. They, many times they're bold in their sinfulness. Um, and also they technically, at, at, like, they, they don't change because it's not going to change until their self-inflicted wounds consume them. They act out with uh, anger, hot tempered. That's why 29.11 of Proverbs says, a fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. And Proverbs 14.16, a wise man hears the Lord and shuns evil, but a fool is hot headed and reckless. When dealing with this kind of fool, be very careful. Doesn't take instruction, doesn't take instruction with simple discipline. This is instruction with serious reproof, consequences, very precise, clear language, set up the scenario, get out of the way, because you're dealing with a stubborn fool. Mm -hmm.